guns and money. We may have to do that for Nevada, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt, joined by United States Senator Tom Cotton. First, Senator Cotton, your general reaction to the results of last night. <laughs> well, Hugh, Warren Zevon is a great lead in. I think we'll be doing it uh, in Georgia for another uh, uh, month as well. Uh, there'll be a lot of lawyers and money in Georgia. And if you care about your guns in Georgia, you're certainly going to need to get out and go for Herschel Walker in the runoff. Um, so, Hugh, I would say, obviously, the election results were not the, the big smashing blowout victory we'd hoped for, um, but a lot of successes. First off, and most important from my standpoint in the Senate, is the Senate still up for grabs. I think Adam Laxalt will pull it out in Nevada. Ron Johnson, I think, is waiting for a call. That puts us at 50 seats, and that means that, as it was in 2020, uh, it'll come down to a runoff in Georgia, and I think Herschel Walker, with all of our support, can win that runoff in early December. Um, in the House of Representatives, um, it looks like we're going to take the majority. There's a lot of uh, seats, especially on the West Coast, still waiting to be counted. Um, but we had real good nights in Florida and in uh, New York in particular, picking up House seats there. So we're going to be able to put the brakes on the Biden agenda. Uh, and then obviously we had some Republicans uh, who had accomplished a lot in office, who had delivered results. And I think that's what a lot of the American people are looking for, especially our governors. If you look at uh, Ron DeSantis' huge victory in Florida, Brian Kemp running up the score against Stacey Abrams, Greg Abbott's re-election, Mike DeWine's smashing victory in Ohio in your home state. Uh, we had a lot of uh, voters coming out and rewarding Republicans who had effectively steered their states through difficult times over these last four years, even in places where we came up short, like my good friend Lee Zeldin, who still ran a great race in New York. He helped us carry across many House members, as I said. So although it wasn't the, the huge victory a lot of us had hoped for, uh, a lot of bright spots, I think we'll get back to work in the Georgia election next month, and then hopefully we'll have a Senate and a House majority and begin to deliver on an agenda that can help reverse the damage that Joe Biden and the Democrats have caused this country on the last four years. Kind of like what I lay out in Only the Strong, to rebuild our military and secure our border, uh, to achieve energy independence, to crack down on crime in our streets. Now, uh, Senator Cotton, you announced earlier this week you will not be seeking the presidency in 2024. I wanted to confirm that for our audience. And you did it before this election. It got nothing to do with this election. Would you just explain it to people so they hear it from you and not from me? Sure, Hugh. Um, Ann and I uh, had reflected and prayed on the decision over the last couple months. But as our boys, who are seven and five, were back in school and I was on the campaign trail, uh, we began to realize it's a particularly challenging time to be gone six or seven days a week uh, for two years. You know, if they were four years younger, they probably wouldn't even be aware that I was gone. And if they were four years older, uh, they would understand why it matters and why the sacrifice is worth it, in addition to being able to travel and participate on the campaign trail. So I'm, I'm pretty confident Republican primary voters can find another nominee and probably a pretty good one. But I know for sure that my boys can't find another dad for the next two years. And as my, my seven-year-old Gabriel uh, learns to hit the fastball in Little League over these next two years, and my five-year-old Daniel learns to read, I, I want to be there uh, to help teach them those things. And uh, I, I wanted to make that known to all the many generous, kind supporters who encouraged me to run over the years before this midterm election or before the presidential election gets underway. Uh, because uh, my, our decision was about our family. Not closing the book entirely on potential uh, future campaigns, uh, but closing the 24 chapter and going to keep working hard in the United States Senate for the great people of Arkansas, who, if I could just flag one other big victory last night to you, I, I'm extremely, extremely uh, thankful that the, the good people of Arkansas, level-headed, very sensible, rejected a recreational marijuana initiative. I also want to thank the good people of Arkansas for putting Sarah Huckabee Sanders in the state house, you have a great partner and a governor, your colleague, your seatmate from Arkansas, also winning re-election. And Sarah's going to be a superstar for everyone who needs a superstar to come in for them. As is Governor DeSantis, uh, I think that um, the biggest winner of the night for the Republicans is Governor DeSantis and Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Ted Budd won. I know you helped him out. And, and uh, uh, Ron Johnson won. I know you helped him out. But we didn't get over the line in New Hampshire or Pennsylvania or Tiffany Smiley or Joe O'Day. What do you think held them back, Tom Cotton? Yeah, those are some disappointing losses, especially disappointed about Tiffany Smiley. I've known Tiffany and Scotty now for a few years. They've been great champions for our veterans. And I was with her and her kids on the campaign trail late last week. Um, you know, I think in the end, in some ways, we, we saw a replay of the 2020 election and the Georgia runoffs in 2020. I think it's probably fitting that we're going to have another Georgia runoff 
we just have a, a closely divided country. Um, and our candidates who, who have a record in particular, um, you know, have able to deliver results for the people performed really well last night. Like we talked about earlier, some of the governors like Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott, uh, Mike DeWine, and some of our senators as well. You know, Marco Rubio won a smashing victory in Florida, as Tim Scott did in South Carolina, and Ron Johnson won in very tough circumstances in Wisconsin. Um, so, like I said, I think in some ways it's uh, a bit of a replay of the 2020 election in a closely divided nation, and small differences can make a big difference. Uh, you know, we had some great candidates in, in districts that were hard to win, like Hung Cal in Northern Virginia, a district that Joe Biden won by double digits. He almost pulled it off, but that's just a tough district. You know, you had Benjamin Netanyahu on for a great interview earlier this week, and he finally just pulled out a victory after uh, five uh, elections in recent years in Israel. In some ways, it's the same dynamic. Um, so some small differences here and there in districts uh, can uh, make a very big difference in what is otherwise a closely divided country and has been now for a few election cycles. Now, plates are grinding each other, and eventually one gives and one, one doesn't. And we are in a 50-50 country, and the Senate of the United States will matter. So I don't see any retirements from the Supreme Court in the next two years, so I don't think we're going to have a knockdown. But we really need Herschel to stop the worst judges. We, and I think that is the message, that we've got to save the courts, and Herschel Walker is the guy to say, if it comes down to that and Adam Laxalt wins, let me talk to you about the NRSC looking forward. Who is going to run the NRSC for the next cycle when so many seats are held by Democrats and they're fighting what Republicans basically had to fight a multi-fight, multi-front war this year? Uh, so right now, the only uh, candidate of which I'm aware is Steve Daines, uh, an outstanding senator uh, from Montana. Uh, when we're back in Washington next week in session, uh, we'll uh, start to have our leadership choices. Um, so, uh, like I said, I don't not aware of anyone other than Steve Daines uh, running for that. I was on the campaign trail with him. Steve is a very accomplished senator, knows how to win tough races. You know, he was in one of those races in 2020 that the Democrats spent tens of millions of dollars on, uh, yet he pulled it out by a substantial margin. And as you say, we've got a lot of great pickup opportunities around the country. As you know, luck would have it, many of those states like West Virginia and Pennsylvania, Ohio, New Mexico, uh, Montana, are big energy producing states. And as I, as I outline in Only the Strong, energy independence is not just vital for our uh, prosperity here at home, but also vital for our national security and support for our allies abro abroad. So with a new Republican uh, House and hopefully a new Republican Senate after the Georgia runoff, I think that should be one of our priority issues. Uh, making Senator, sure let, let's talk about China for a producers. second. The happiest man on the planet last night was President Xi. Because you've made the case in Only the Strong, and we talked about it all last week. We have to plus up defense spending. We have to get serious about it. And I'm not sure even a one-vote margin in the Senate will allow us to do that, because we have some senators who are very leery of defense spending on our team. And the House has got some isolationists, I mean, just outright isolationists. I don't think we have any isolationists in the Republican caucus in the Senate. But what do you think? Will, even if we get Georgia and, and Nevada... Is it possible that we can plus up defense to where it needs to be, as you outlined, in Only the Strong? Hugh, I hope so. I mean, the biggest obstacle, of course, is the Democrats. Um, and it, it's not just that they're opposed to more spending on defense, but they're willing to hold defense spending hostage. As I explain in Only the Strong, uh, defense spending is different from other kinds of spending. You, you can't base your strategy on your budget. You have to base your budget on your strategy, which is based on the threats you face, and the threat we face from China is grave. Um, so we got some good new Republican senators coming on. You know, you had J.D. Vance on the show the other day, and he made some outstanding points, similar to what I've been making for years, about the need to spend more on commercial off-the-shelf technology and take advantage of our cutting-edge uh, tech sector here in America. Some of that you see happening in Ukraine right now uh, with things like the Starlink Internet uh, systems or, um, you know, custom-made uh, 3D-printed drones. We, we need more of that uh, in our Department of Defense as opposed to multi-decade, multi-trillion dollar programs uh, that seem off budget uh, and um, over time. Unfortunately, Democrats don't see it that way. They're willing to hold up and delay defense spending unless they get the same amount of, you know, domestic and typically welfare spending they want. So we'll see what some of those Democrats in vulnerable states, uh, states that were close one way or the other in, uh, in the election last night, have to say when we get back in the cycle. But, of course, if we uh, control both the House and the Senate, we'll be able to set the terms of debate and bring the bills to the floor and force those Democrats uh, to take a position on it. 
So Republicans are disappointed because um, my original numbers of R plus one and the House by 25 are not coming true. We might get the R plus one in the Senate, but we're not going to make 25. Uh, what do you tell to a disappointed Republican this morning? Well, as we said, I mean, obviously we all wanted a big smashing victory. I would have liked to have a lot more than R plus one and R plus 20 or 25 in, in the House. But uh, we shouldn't undermine or uh, uh, underestimate uh, just how significant it is to control the House of Representatives, even if it's a smaller majority than one might like, or for that matter, uh, if we can win the Georgia runoff to be able to control the Senate. I mean, that sets the terms of debate. That allows us to stop the worst of the Biden uh, legislative agenda. I saw this in 2013, 2014, my one uh, term in the House of Representatives when we had a Republican House. Didn't accomplish everything we wanted, of course, uh, but uh, we were able to control the agenda in the House of Representatives. And that's a huge victory coming off two years uh, of uh, overreach by the Democrats in Washington. So I know that everybody, there's a lot of races that people would like to win. But again, small, small shifts in the electorate here and there can make a big difference. Um, and I think we're going to see that again uh, as we head into this runoff in Georgia. I would just encourage all of your listeners to be prepared for that, to do what they can, to pitch in a few bucks uh, if they're in Georgia, to uh, maybe help get out the vote. And if they're not in Georgia, you know, it's nice down there this time of year. <laughs> so you can go yeah. vacation a little bit. Um, and not only that, yeah, everybody who can sense. is going to go to Georgia and help. I may have to go down to AM 920 and set up that. Last question for you, Senator Cotton. Uh, polling was off again. This time it was off in the Republicans' favor. Are we ever going to get, is it worth using for anybody? <laughs> well, as, as I told a lot of folks leading up to the election, um, I, I wouldn't want to count on polling error one way or the other. Um, it better be uh, far ahead, as you once wrote. And, you know, if it's not close, they can't cheat. So it's always better to win, you know, the way Sarah Huckabee or the way John Bozeman won in Arkansas last night. Um, but, yeah, polling is, uh, is a mercurial thing, and it can be uh, very difficult, especially as fewer and fewer people have landlines and more and more don't pick up unknown numbers. Um, so the best thing you can do, I, I think, from the results last night, obviously, it is just be a, a strong, effective leader that delivers results for your people, a growing prosperous economy and safe streets and sound schools for kids. That's what you saw in Brian Kemp's big victory in Georgia, Ron Santos's victory in Florida, Greg Abbott's victory in Texas, um, uh, DeWine's victory in Ohio, plus a lot of our senators uh, who have been great and effective leaders in the Senate, like Kim Scott and Marco Rubio. Blocking and tackling, it still matters. Senator Tom Cotton, keep coming back, and I hope only the strong continues to sell. Maybe we'll actually persuade some Democrats to support to try and deter Xi from taking Taiwan. We will find out. Senator Tom Cotton, only the strong, still available at Amazon.com. Thanks for joining me on an election morn where everyone was up late.